Hey guys, stay patient here with my full trophy guide for Full Throttle Remastered. This is another point and click adventure with a super easy platinum that can be polished off in just one hour if you skip most of the dialogue and cutscenes by holding the circle button. There are however a few cutscenes that you have to watch for certain trophies to pop, so wait until I say it's safe to skip a cutscene before you do so. You can also speed things up by double clicking the transition arrows that you use to enter new areas. The controls are nice and simple, you click where you want to go, and when you click on an interactable object on screen it gives you a few icons that you can choose from which each represent a different way of interacting with that object. There's a face, a hand and a foot. If you press up toward the face once it'll land on the mouth which you use for talking to people and a few other things, press up again and it'll move to the eyes which are for looking at the item, obviously. To the right is a foot used for kicking, and on the left is a hand which is used for the majority of interactions. You can cycle through your inventory items using R1 and L1, or bring all of them up on screen using triangle. The right analogue stick can be used to cycle between all the hotspots in the area, but you don't really need to use it. You will need to use the manual save feature though, and it's recommended that you make a few saves throughout the game just in case. A big thank you yet again to the Mind is a City for her text walkthrough that proved very helpful while making this video, as always you can find it linked in the description. Ok, so when we start the game we're going to skip the very first cutscene but not the second one that starts immediately after. You need to let this cutscene play all the way out to the end. There's a trophy called uh, One Final Offer which will pop during the cutscene, so if you skip it you will miss the trophy. I am going to edit out most of the cutscene itself from the video, but you will need to let the whole thing play as I mentioned. When you get to the end here though, you will see the uh, trophy pop up, and of course once the trophy pops you can skip the rest of the cutscene, that's safe. Now you're going to get the controls come up on screen, you can take a look, obviously you review them, they're quite simple, they probably look more complex there than they need to. but. Uh, Next, we're going to be earning a trophy that involves staying idle for around 3 minutes. This trophy is called Burn In Rubber. This is a bit kind of similar to the Day of the Tentacle trophy, but this doesn't involve waiting for a random animation. This is just going to pop when the sort of screensaver comes up on screen. So here it is now, just leave it for a few minutes. Obviously, I skipped out uh, or I edited out some of that footage there. But once that's popped, we are going to click on the lid of the, uh, the dumpster, and that's going to allow us to exit. Now we're going to start trying to lick items, <laughs> so we need to use our mouth on the dumpster itself. And then on the sticker or the sign that's posted on the dumpster, and you'll see the line, I'm not putting my lips on that. We're going to do the same to the boxes at the front of the screen. We basically need to see this line of dialogue 10 times. And finally in this area, use your mouth on the boxes on the right hand side. So that's four items. The dumpster, the dumpster sign and the two sets of boxes. And then we can exit out the right hand side of the screen. And once we're at the front of the kickstand, we're going to use our mouth on the bike. Then on the kickstand sign, And finally in this area, do the same on the window. And once we've done that, we can use our foot on the door to kick our way in. And then obviously enter as well, walk through the door. Now we're going to skip uh, this bit of dialogue and we're going to carry on using our mouth on first of all the register. Then I accidentally press X again, just ignore that. We're going to use it again on the antlers on the back wall. And the final I'm not putting my lips on that item is the TV, the monitor on the right hand wall. Now I think it can be 10 random items, but they're the first 10 that we can use, so that's going to pop the trophy. Then we're going to use our hand icon on the bartender himself, and we can skip this scene as well. That's going to give us the ring pull trophy. And now we can go ahead and exit the bar by clicking on the arrow at the bottom. Now if we use our bike, click on the bike and then use our hand. And once we're on it, we can skip the first scene, but when we get onto the road, you want to leave it. Don't skip that, that's going to result in a fight. So when we get here, leave this scene to play out, there's going to be some dialogue. 
then once this dialogue's over, uh, we're going to be in a fight with this guy. And basically, it's just going to involve sort of steering towards him and then mashing the X button just to hit him with our fists. This conversation does go on for a while, but eventually it will be over. We're going to be doing quite a bit of fighting on our bikes during this, during this game. Obviously, it makes it quite different to a lot of point-and-click adventures because, you know, it's more actual gameplay rather than just clicking on things, you know? There's going to be a whole sequence where we need to take out a lot of different bikes and find different weapons and things. But anyway, once we're here, we're going to just steer into him, keep smacking him in the face, and uh, eventually you'll knock him off. That's going to pop the A number one Polecat Honcho trophy. And uh, by the way, you can go ahead and skip the rest of the cutscenes here. So there are going to be a few, we can just skip through them. Once we're in this uh, garage, we're going to speak to Maureen, so use our mouth on her. <laughs> Many other things that that could mean. Anyway, for this trophy, we need to use all of the dialogue options. So you want to keep her using the top option, basically. Make sure you don't use the bottom one, which will be either I better get going or well, I'll let you get back to work. Just make sure to avoid them. You want to use every line of dialogue. Eventually, it will come up with how's it look. Now, you only need to use that once or maybe twice, but it will stay there. You know, you can get into a loop where you're just using it over and over again. So just scroll down and use the other ones. Just make sure to use all of them except for the bottom one. And eventually you'll sort of exhaust every line of dialogue. And the trophy is actually going to pop before you exit the conversation. So you'll know you've done it right before you leave and you can keep going until it does pop. So there we go, there's the no mo trophy. And once you've got that, you can then scroll down and click on, well, I'll let you get back to work. I accidentally clicked on her again. You don't need to do that, that was just my bad. Now we're gonna click on the picture that's hung on the wall at the back there on the right, and we're gonna use our eyes to look at it. And then we can skip this scene, but it's going to give us the Minking Memories trophy. Then we need to grab the gas can off the floor just under the picture. Pick that up. And then use the right analog uh, stick to scroll to the right, and it will lock onto the hose. And you want to grab that as well. And then we can exit out the door on the right-hand side. So make sure you've got the gas can and the hose before you exit. And then we can just say, well, I'd better be off or I'd better take off whatever that line was just to end that conversation. And then we can exit out the arrow on the far left. Now, from here, we're going to make our way to Todd's trailer, which is this building sort of in the middle of the screen. Now, I recommend making a save here because uh, this next trophy can be a bit temperamental. So make yourself a save. What we're going to be doing is knocking on the door and then as soon as the guy sort of answers, he's not going to open the door, but he'll speak to us. As soon as he does, you want to start talking to the door. So you just keep using your mouth on the door over and over again. Now, the first two times I did this, I was skipping our character's dialogue by pressing X. So uh, when this comes up, I was pressing X. But as soon as it changes to the camera angle looking at this guy inside, you know, the guy on the other side of the door, I was holding down circle to skip that whole sequence. Now the trophy unlocked every time I did it that way. But the one time I tried skipping his dialogue by pressing X, it didn't unlock. So that could be the cause of the glitch. I'm not entirely sure. But either way, you've got the save. So if you want to play it safe, you could always let every line of dialogue play out without skipping it at all. But the way I had it work three times was where I skipped you know, the other guy's dialogue, when it changed the camera angle to look at him instead of us, you know, the camera from inside, I just held circle. And then with the rest of the dialogue, I just skipped through with the X button. It could just be that you need to do it a few times. Maybe it's just a bit temperamental, but either way, we'll eventually get the angels with dirty faces trophy. And once we do have that, we're going to use our foot on the door and that's going to kick it in. Now, once we're inside, we're going to click on the refrigerator at the back of the room on the wall, and we're going to open that. And then we're going to take the meat out from the fridge. And now we can click on the cabinet on the left-hand side and open that. 
and there's going to be a lock pick inside. So you want to take the lock pick and then we're going to walk onto the lift, which is just sort of behind the open door there. Now, once we're down in the basement, we want to click on the torch, which is just to the right of the table. That's going to trigger the carry the torch trophy. We can skip the cutscene and then make our way to the left again, back to this sort of main hub area. And we're going to make our way to the fuel tower in the top right. So use the red arrow in the top right there. And what you want to do is press R1 to scroll through your inventory items and find the lock pick and then use that on the padlock on the gate. That's going to give us the not so tough after all trophy. You also need to pick up the lock pick off the floor. So make sure to grab that, not the lock pick, sorry, the lock itself, the padlock. Then we can enter the gate. Now this bit's timed. So you want to use your hand on the ladder and then move your cursor to the top left corner where that kind of, uh, I don't know, that's some kind of tank. Uh, so we're going to, as soon as we get control back, you need to click on that. And then once you're back in that corner, press X just to the right of where our character is, just to move him in behind cover so he's hidden. If you get that wrong, you can go back to this area as many times as you need to get it right. Uh, but that will pop the annoyed Floyd trophy. Now we're going to click on the gas cap on this hovercraft thing and open it up. Then we want to use the hose from our inventory. So remember R1 to scroll through, use the hose on the gas cap and then use uh, the gas can on the hose. And then we use our mouth, just click on the hose itself and use our mouth to start siphoning the fuel. And that will put, uh, that will unlock, okay, I'll put my lips on that. And then we can exit. Uh, sorry, no, we're going to have some cutscenes first. Uh, we can skip all these. And then we can exit to the left again, back to the hub. Now we're going to be going to the junkyard, which is the top left section. Now, once we're here, we're going to scroll through with R1, well, one and find the padlock and use that on the bottom of this entrance. There's like a latch that we can lock up. Then we want to click on the chain just to the right here and use that to climb up the wall and hop into the junkyard. Now we can click on the floor in front of us and that will eventually cause him to hop down. And once we're down there, we want to head all the way to the right until we uh, until we get access to an arrow that will take us to a new area. So there it is, the red arrow. And remember, you can double click them to move through quicker. Now, if we equip the meat in our inventory, which looks like that, and use it on the car that's just underneath the magnet, once we've done that, we can exit to the left again. So use the left hand arrow. And now in the top right of the screen will be a crane with an arrow pointing up towards it. So click on that arrow and we're going to make our way up to the crane itself to control that magnet. Now, once we're inside, we're going to use the right analog stick to move to the right, which is going to change the controls that we're in control of. So we're going to then press X to push that button and then move the right analog stick twice to the left to move our hand onto this lever and then keep moving it down until we grab the car with the magnet. Then we can move it all the way up to the top until it won't go any further. Then we can press circle to exit. Now we want to walk to the left or, you know, click on the floor again, uh, just to make our way down and you can skip the traveling if you like, and then just keep walking to the left until you see this interactable pile here, just under the light, where the light's shining. This is the parts pile, you want to interact with that. That's going to pop the right in the junk trophy. You can skip all these cutscenes here. There's a few, yeah, quite a few here. We can skip all of them, that's fine. Now we're going back to the fuel tower, which is the top right section. Wait for the bike to stop and then you can double click on it to get there nice and quickly. Then if we enter the gate again and actually climb up the ladder this time. Now there's going to be some cutscenes here. There's one that you cannot skip. 
So you can skip this first one, but leave this second one. As soon as you see our character driving his bike sort of towards these two guys on the right hand side of the road, you want to leave this one to play out. So I am, of course, going to skip most of the cutscene here. We've skipped towards the end section, and this is going to unlock unnatural causes. But just let that whole cutscene play out to make sure that trophy does unlock. Once it's unlocked, obviously, you can skip the rest of the cutscene. Now, once we're back here, we want to interact with all the rubble that's on this sort of uh, walkway. And then we can exit to the left again, back to the hub. We can uh, skip this little scene here, exit back to the left, and then use our bike, which is just near us there. You can see it very small, but it should be visible. And once we're on it, we can click on the yellow arrow in the top middle of the screen. That's going to take us uh, to the highway, if I remember correctly. No, sorry, it's going to bring us uh, to this building first. So once we stop, we can skip those scenes. We want to click on the arrow just to the left of the building. This is the bar that we were at earlier, and that's going to walk us back to where we started the game. Now, if you click on the dumpster that we climbed out of originally, we're going to... Uh, we're going to sort of have a conversation with Miranda. You can skip that. That's going to give us a new hope trophy. They're popping real fast here. Anyway, you can exit to the right and then enter the kickstand bar. So we're back in here and we want to look at the big TV screen. Uh, I think it only has to be three times, although I had to do it four times. So use the I option to look at this three or four times and eventually it will pop the news to me trophy. I might have clicked the wrong option on one of them, I'm not sure, but just keep doing it until the trophy unlocks. At this point, I thought it was going to unlock, but uh, it wasn't just yet. So this is the fourth time. And there we go, news to me. Right now we want to talk to Emmett, who is the guy on the table, sat down sort of uh, doing five finger fillet here. So use the mouth option on him. And you want to say, I think I accidentally clicked on him twice there. You want to say, I can do that. And then say, let me show you how to do that. But keep saying it over and over again. I'm skipping all the rest of the dialogue. It's going to take a long time for him to give in and let us have a go. And when you get in control, you'll get the I can do that trophy. But you can also hold down circle to skip the actual mini game itself. And then click on the arrow at the bottom of the screen to leave the mini game. Now we need to scroll through our inventory to find the ID, which is this sort of, uh, almost looks like a passport, and we're going to use that on Emmett. Now there's going to be a bunch of cutscenes here, which we can skip. That's absolutely fine. Once we're back in control, our cursor will be on a door. We need to go into that door. And we're going to look at the painting, the pictures on the wall on the left, but this big picture sort of on the top right, we need to use the eye icon on that one. All the other ones are generic, but that's the one we need to look at. That's the hard tail trophy. Then you want to use your hand on the pillow to move it out the way. And we can grab the, uh, the tire iron that is under the pillow, pick that one up. Now we're going to scroll through with our one to find the tire iron and use it on the trunk or the chest here at the end of the bed. And this will give us the Hosed Trophy. There are a lot of trophies in this game and they pop extremely quickly. So we're going to skip a bunch more cutscenes here. Eventually we'll pull our bike up alongside this truck or whatever it is, this trailer that's carrying a bunch of fertilizer. And we want to click on the fertilizer that's on the floor that's all spilt and use our hand icon to pick some of it up. I'm not really sure how he's going to carry it, but I'm going to put some fertilizer in his pocket. And then we want to use our tire iron on the wheels of this vehicle, this big truck. Once we've loosened them, we can click on the truck itself, not the wheels, but sort of scroll up, click on the truck and then use... Uh, the foot icon to kick it and we're going to have to walk all the way around the back but just leave this scene to play out and he'll give it a kick which will knock it over.
Okay, once that's done and once we're back in control, we want to use our bike again. And we're going to be exiting out the northern part of the road, you know, up the road rather than down. So, where is it? There we go. Click on the bike, use your hand. And then the yellow arrow is going to sort of take us, I think it's a yellow arrow this time. It takes a long time to walk. <laughs> Uh, there it is. Just click on the end of the road there. And off we go. Now that's going to give us the fertilized trophy. We can skip all these cutscenes here. Eventually, it's going to result in the fertilized trophy, which is kind of going to pop during the cutscenes, but, uh, you know, it's not one of those ones where you need to watch the cutscene. There we go. Just as we're pulling up at the end here, fertilized. Now we're going to exit to the left again via the yellow arrow. Okay, now we are going to be exiting this road. Don't skip this scene. We're going to exit this road when we come across the stop sign. So we're going to have, I think, three signs for mine road. They sort of pop up in the top right or left, depending on which side the turning is. But eventually there's going to be a stop sign and it will give us an X prompt. It will be around about now. There you go. So we press X to take the exit. And once we're at this car, we are going to switch to our tire iron and use the tire iron on the car itself. We can skip the actual animation if you like. There we go. Then we're going to get back on our bike and head back to the south again, the way that we came in. So the southern exit, the yellow arrow down at the bottom of the screen there. And once we're on the main road, we're going to need to take an exit to Mine Road. It doesn't matter which one, and there are lots of them, so press X as soon as you see Mine Road pop up in the top right or left. And you're going to keep driving until you come across Father Talk. The first bike you come across is going to be someone we need to have a conversation with. And it's going to be similar to our conversation with Maureen, where you need to exhaust all of the options. But uh, do not choose the take it easy or something like, all right, take it easy, father. It's right at the bottom. It's the line that will kind of end the conversation. Don't use that. The conversation is actually going to end naturally on its own. So make sure you use all of the other options. It's probably safe just to use the X button over and over again, which will use obviously the top option each time. Now, after this conversation is played out, or you know, after we've chosen all the dialogue options and got the talk talk trophy, we are going to want to basically carry on circling mine road. So don't turn off at all. It's a long circular road and we're just going to drive around it naturally. Now we're going to be coming across a lot of other bikes that we need to take out. We don't need to take them all out, but there are certain ones we need to uh, take out with certain weapons so that we can collect their weapon. Now, the items that we're aiming to get are the rocket booster and the goggles, which are both carried or sort of equipped on specific bikes. And we'll show you them as we go through. I'm going to put an annotation on screen explaining what's needed. We also need to earn a trophy here for using the fertilizer as a weapon against the girl who's carrying a chainsaw. Now, when you get in a fight with these enemies, you'll see which weapons they're carrying when they start attacking you. And also, they tend to be the same enemies each time. The same bikers carry the same weapons. Now, that guy that we just skipped the fight with, uh, you can hold circle if you don't need to fight the guy. That guy, he carries the goggles, but we can't uh, collect the goggles yet because we need the board to be able to take him out. And to get the board, we need to take out the bold guy using the chainsaw which we're going to collect from the red-haired girl that uh, has no hat. There are two girls with red hair. Uh, one of them isn't wearing a hat. That's the one that we need to take out using the fertilizer for the specific trophy that we're going to get in this section. That guy that just shot off on his bike, he's got the rocket booster. So try and remember what he looks like. And that guy we need to take out using the chain or the mace which we're going to get from just a normal biker basically. You'll see him attacking you with the chain when you get into a fight. This is the bold guy. We're going to take him out, although we're not going to get a weapon from him. This is just to show you that if you take them out with the wrong weapon, with our fists here, then you don't get anything. But if we take him out using the chainsaw, then we would get his board. And I think the idea is that you're kind of chopping off part of his bike or something to get the wood, to get the board from him. 
This section is quite long winded, to be honest. It's the longest section of the game. And it's sort of a bit luck based, depending on which enemies you come across. This girl here is the red haired girl, but she doesn't have a, sorry, she does have a hat. So she's not the one that we're looking for. We can take her out, but we're not going to get anything from her. We will eventually come across someone we need. Basically though, the first two enemies you're looking for are either the, there's just a normal guy with a chain, which I think is this guy here. He looks very much like the rocket booster guy. He's got sunglasses there. Um, we are going to take him out just with our fists and you'll see him try and hit us with a chain. He'll get it out. There we go. So this is the chain guy. Once you find him, you want to take him out. Then you're going to be able to use the chain against the rocket booster bike which is a similar bike to this, but it's the one that kind of shot off earlier on. Um, I think you kind of put the chain up into the actual rocket itself. It kind of gets all tangled up and blows up. But there we go. You'll see a little cutscene where we pick up the chain. And now I think we come across the red haired girl. You'll see her. Sh oh no, this is the, <laughs> this is the bold guy again. So we're just going to skip this fight. You can hold circle if you need to skip any of the fights. I apologize that I've included all of this. I could have just shown you the enemies that you need to take out, but to be honest, they come in different orders for each person. So I don't think that would have really benefited you. You might've uh, got a bit confused as to why you weren't seeing certain enemies at certain times. Right, so this is the rocket booster guy. You wanna take him out with the chain and that's going to give us a little cutscene showing that we've now got the rocket booster. So now that first section is done. Now all we're looking out for is the red haired girl without a hat so we can use the fertilizer against her which will give us a trophy that will give us her chainsaw which we, we can use to get the board off this guy you can also hold circle to skip before you actually reach the fight itself um, and it will kind of skip you forward a few meters and you'll skip over him um, but yeah once you've got the chainsaw you can get the board and then you can use the board to get the goggles from the bike that we just went past back there a moment ago we held the skip button before reaching him. And it takes me a while to find the chainsaw girl for some reason. Hopefully she comes up soon. But remember, we do want to use the fertilizer against her because uh, that is going to pop a trophy. Now you could have made a save at the start of this. I did mention at the beginning of the game that it's worth making regular saves anyway. Um, where is she? Yeah, I probably should have said at the start of this section that you can make a save. I didn't make a save. I don't think it's that important because these bikes do tend to repeat themselves. So you do have multiple chances, but I'm not sure how many of the chainsaw girls are here. So if you took her out with the wrong, uh, if you didn't use the fertilizer on her, then it might take you a while to find another one. So it's probably best to, you know, remember that as soon as you find the red haired girl, which is just here, finally, I think this is her. You can see from the back, she's got, yeah, red hair. And you'll see, you'll see that she's got almost like a mohawk. Now, you want to be careful because she can take you out with one hit. So just uh, press square until you equip the fertilizer, which is like that little puddle or little splash of yellow. And then use that on her. And that's going to pop the fistful of fertilizer trophy. Now we finally have the chainsaw and we can take out one of these big, fat, bold guys. Um, he's not that fat, actually. He's just uh, muscly, I guess. <laughs> so you want to switch to the chainsaw to take him out. That's going to give us the board. And then we are going to use the board against the guy on the yellow bike that looks very different to the others. It's quite a futuristic one, almost like a Tron style bike. But uh, with this guy, I think it does take me a bit of time to find him. So I will explain now. Uh, when he's riding along, he's got his head ducked down. He's kind of almost like the Tron bikes where they're leant forward. But I think he's basically asleep. <laughs> so uh, I think the idea is that the gob ah here it is the yellow bike yeah the idea is that the goggles kind of auto drive his bike for him but you want to equip your board in the bottom left you can see the weapon there and don't get too close to him because he will knock you off using oil but as soon as his head comes up drive in and press x to knock him off that's the only way you can get the goggles if you take him out with anything else then it's going to you know it's not going to give you the goggles um but once we've got the goggles we can equip them obviously you need the rocket booster as well and you know, you need to have got the trophy with the chainsaw girl using the fertilizer. But now basically we're going to be circling the road still. This is all automated. And we're going to be looking out for an entrance to a hidden cave. Now the entrance comes just after you cross over the main road. It's going to be a little, a little while till we get there. 
But when you cross the main road, there will be an exit on the left and the sign will come up just there in the bottom left there. Don't use that one. I'm just pointing out where it appears. So in the bottom left of this big square on the visor, it will come up with the X prompt and it will flash saying exit. There it is again. But rather than saying exit, it will say cave. Now what happens is the cave appears directly after the first exit once we cross this road. So once we come up this little slope here, you'll see the main road. We're kind of going across the intersection here, down the other side. And the first exit you come across will flash up, but immediately after it, after three flashes, the cave, uh, the cave prompt will appear. So one, two, three, and cave. There we go. Just press X there, and we're going to enter this hidden area. Now that's going to give us the Goglaw trophy. Once we're here, we can make our way via the arrow to the right and then up again to the next screen using the arrow to the left. Now we're going to want to, I skipped that cutscene there, we're going to want to interact with the ramp twice. So the first time is going to push it behind our bike. And once it's behind our bike, just interact with it again, obviously using our hand each time and that's going to connect it to the bike itself. You can skip even little scenes like this, little animations. You can't skip the scenes where he's walking like that, but you can skip any other animations, it seems, which is very odd. Even the shortest ones that are a couple of seconds long, you can hold circle and skip them. But once you've got it attached to the bike, you can get back on the bike and then interact with the bottom right arrow to go back the way we came, just one screen back. Now you can skip that and then interact with the ramp again and that's going to place it and we're going to be using it to take out some bikers basically. But as soon as you can, you can start skipping and skip that. You can skip all of these scenes and it's going to give you the Spirit of Ricky Moran trophy eventually. Just here, look. Now we're sort of at the top of the screen there. We want to click on the bike and interact with it again. And this is one of those long walking scenes that you can't skip for some reason but he's going to walk back to the bike and then we're going to be basically driving over that ramp the one that you'll probably see at the end of the broken road there we've just placed it in place so we can launch off it so there'll be a red arrow but then it will turn to a yellow arrow when we get on the bike so you want to click on that the arrow just above uh, the ramp don't worry he does get off his bike briefly but he's just checking some things and uh, we can go ahead and skip these cutscenes as well. That's going to pop the pure evil trophy. Eventually we'll end up here and we want to walk down this ramp. You'll see us, we're quite small now on the screen. You want to walk to the bottom of the ramp and then walk to the right until you see the red arrow pointing down and you can double click on that. Now in this area with the souvenir stand, you want to pick up the joystick. Now, I think you need to press X on the joystick itself once you're carrying it to start playing with the car, and you're going to keep playing with it. Keep pressing X. I think you have to press X. It might happen automatically, but I was pressing X, and it was kind of forcing it to happen. So you're going to play with it until the batteries run dry. And once you've done that, we're going to take a look at the souvenirs on the back wall of, his, uh, of the stand here, just behind the guy manning the souvenir table. So use your eyes to look at it and he's going to kind of turn around and become distracted. As soon as he turns around, you want to grab the rabbit on the floor just by our feet while he's looking the other way. That needs to be done quickly, obviously, but you can do it over and over again if you need to. Then we can exit to the south via the arrow at the bottom of the screen. And we're going back to where we were just a moment ago. And you can click on your bike, use the hand option to get back on it. And we're going to need to wait for him to walk all the way back up. He's walking quite fast now, so it shouldn't take too long. Now we're going to exit through the yellow arrow on the left of the screen here, the one pointing up. So this is a minefield. What we want to do first of all is use the rabbit that we picked up on the minefield. So equip the rabbit and then just click on the ground in front of you, that big area. And he's going to take a while to kind of walk out and eventually get blown up. And that's going to blow the battery out of him. 
which we're then going to pick up. <clears throat> now we're going to be coming back here later and there is a trophy that will require you to make a save before you do it, just in case you do uh, struggle to get it right the first time. It can be a bit finicky, but uh, we're going to be using a bunch of rabbits to clear this minefield basically, but for now we're just using the one. So you'll see the battery just by our feet to the left there, just on the ground. You want to grab that and then we're going to back out, you know, just click on the arrow at the bottom of the screen. That's the Pull a Fast One trophy and we're going to be heading back to the souvenir stand. So all these cutscenes will take us back to the slope and once again, just head down the slope to the right and then through the arrow to the souvenir stand. There we go. Now we want to equip the battery that we just picked up and use it on the RC car, the radio control car there on the floor. Now we're going to be in control of the car and we want to click the arrow on the right hand side of the screen pointing up through that door and that's going to drive the car through and then we're going to click on the turnstile just behind the guy here. So click on that and the car's going to drive through, he's going to follow it. Now while he's trying to get the car back, while he's out of the picture, we are going to grab the bunny box, the, the, uh, it's got the number 12 on it. I think there's only eight in the box actually, but we're going to take that and then we need to exit back uh, to the bike again. So exit through the down arrow and then back up to the bike. Obviously you're going to get the invasion of the bunny snatcher trophy that you just saw pop a moment ago. And once we're back on the bike, we're going to head back to the mine field, which is the yellow arrow on the left, if you remember. Now, once you're back at the minefield, you're going to want to make a save. You definitely want to do this. There are auto saves, but um, you'll see I do actually equip the bunny box before making the save. You don't have to do that. It was just me forgetting the save for a moment. Um, you don't have to, but you know it's probably going to be a more recent save than the auto save, to be honest. There we go. And I think I may have uh, I may have accidentally saved twice there. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, it looked a bit odd for some reason. I wasn't really watching properly. Maybe my editing was a bit off. Anyway, you're going to put the bunny box down on the minefield, and it's actually going to place it sort of on the slope here. And then you're going to grab all the bunnies as they come out. You want to grab them before they blow up. Now you can probably get through this section without all of them, but I do recommend trying to grab all of them just in case because the amount of bunnies you need varies each time. So try and grab them before any blow up. And if you aren't able to, then you can just reload your save. But now uh, what we need to do is use one bunny on the minefield again, like we did earlier. What we're gonna be doing is using one at a time. So you need to wait for the first one to blow up before you use the second one. But we're going to, you know, before we use the second one, we're going to walk to where the bunny ended up, where it blew, uh, where it blew up, because we're gonna be using them to make our way across the, uh, the minefield. So we know it's safe. You know, we know this route is safe. We know we can walk to where that bunny exploded. And once we're here, we're gonna use another one. Just use it anywhere on the minefield and some of them blow up almost immediately and sometimes it's a bit finicky a bit tricky trying to walk to where it did blow up it worked okay that time but sometimes you need to try and aim between our character's legs the other thing to mention is that you need to have one bunny left once you've done this so that's another reason why the save is important to make because we need a bunny for a trophy later on now you have quite a lot of them and you We'll probably have several left by the time you make it across the minefield. But just in case, you know, double check once you finish this section, once you get your uh, control back, once you're back uh, in control and you can check your inventory, make sure you do have one left. Now you'll see here the route that the rabbit took was a bit sort of zigzagging. So I had to walk up bit by bit rather than walk straight to where it blew up because it won't let you walk on dangerous parts of the minefield. Anyway, we're nearly there. I think one more rabbit will do it. So we've probably used, what, four or five? And I think you have eight. So we should have plenty left. And I think clicking on this will take us to the next uh, cutscene. So that's the hair trigger trophy. And we've skipped some cutscenes here, but when you get the chance to speak, you're going to say, let me go or else. And then say, I'll call you names. 
And finally, Diapered Dynamo. That's going to pop the Torta Lesson trophy. Now we're going to skip a bunch of cutscenes here and eventually we're going to be in control of a radio control car, the car that we were using earlier. All of these scenes you can skip right through. We're in control of the red car and what you want to do is using the X button to accelerate, the square button to reverse and the analog stick to steer. You're going to wait till the orange car is just off the ramp to the left there in front of the ramp and then drive over the ramp and land on it to deactivate it. Now we're going to drive into the orange car and kind of slowly knock it down uh, down sort of past this oil patch because the oil patch is difficult to drive over and then drive to its left and we're going to move it all the way across to the right hand side of the screen and there's going to be all these scenes as we're playing that you don't need to watch uh, there will be a cutscene at the end of this section that you do need to watch so be careful with your skipping at this point but we need to, you know, obviously the further away you are when you knock into it, the further it's going to go. So kind of try and bounce off it from a bit of a distance. And we're going to knock it all the way across to the right hand side. Now, if it, get nu sorry, if it gets nudged by the blue car, if we knock it across too far up the screen, the blue car is going to nod, uh, nudge it and sort of bring it back to life. It's going to kind of wake up and start driving around again. And you will need to drive off the left hand ramp again. But the idea is that you need to push it up this ramp on the right we need it off the ramp, off the end, but don't push it along the floor to the end. You want to push it over the ramp because otherwise the blue car is going to come into contact with it. Now, once it's off the end, you can drive off, land on the orange car, and that's going to disable the blue one. And eventually, after some cutscenes, we're going to be in control of this guy that's running around on fire. You want to move him across to this can't beat a Corley sign and run up and down it. Just click on it uh, to the right and left and you're going to set everything on fire here and eventually we're going to be stood on top after some cutscenes that you can skip we're going to be stood on top of the orange car and you can jump straight onto the top of the blue car you'll see it here I deliberately don't straight away if you click on the blue car here then it'll jump across to it that's what you need to do but I'm just going to leave it to drive away once just to show you what happens if you're not quick enough because if you click on the floor he'll jump down off the orange car which will tempt the blue car to come back and ram you again and then while it's there your character will automatically jump back on the orange car so jump off the orange car and then when the blue car returns jump on it and then we need to click on this big fire as the blue car's driving past the fire in the bottom right doesn't matter you can circle as many times as you want but eventually click on the orange fire and then the blue car will drive into it but do not skip this cutscene this cutscene will trigger a trophy now I meant to kind of edit out some of this I don't think I did but it's not a very long cutscene if I remember correctly and um, I'm not sure if there are any other ones that we need to watch all the way through but this is going to unlock the what a pain threshold trophy So I think any moment now, there we go. Okay, apologies that I forgot to edit that out, but it's not a long one like the other ones that I did edit. But that's the What a Pain Threshold trophy, and after skipping the next cutscenes, we're going to be in a conversation with Maureen, and we want to say, what key are you talking about? And then say, I'll see what I can do. Now we want to look at the parts in front of her, this big sort of... Uh, sprawled out pile of parts use the eye icon and we're going to click on the two numbers this number here and the one just above it but there are three others that are hidden so click on the circular lid on the left just there you only need to click on them once click on this lid sort of in the top right and then click on this lid in the bottom right you can sort of mash the x button all over the screen if you like but that's going to reveal five numbers and then you can use the arrow on the right to exit and the arrow behind us to exit that building as well or the vehicle, whatever it was we were in. Now we can skip all this and we are going to click on the arrow just next to us where the bike is. It's pretty much on the bike and that's going to take us behind the building. Now if we walk over to the left roughly where my cursor is, you'll see on the ground there a small bit of rock that we need to kick when the lights on these, these four green lights have all turned black. So when just just there, you can see it now, all four of them are black. And you can hear a, a audio sort of uh, trigger 
that tells you that they're all black as well. You hear a noise, it makes it obvious. So once you're all black, use the kick button, be ready, you know, have it up and ready, and then use the kick button on that bit of rock that was almost glowing, and then it will open a trap door, which we can then enter. That might take you a few tries. I found it a bit finicky. But once we're in this room, we're gonna interact with the floor safe that's just in front of this desk here. And the code we want to enter is 154492. So that's 154492, and then you can press the big button below the numbers. Now that's gonna open a door to the right, which we can enter. In fact, I think that door was already open. Either way, we're gonna walk through it. And then we wanna use the key card, which is this white little card here. Use it on the card reader by the door on the right. And then in this room, there are two levers on the right hand side. We're gonna pull the one on the left once and then quickly pull the one on the right twice. So pull the left one once and then move your cursor to the right one, pull that one straight away and then pull it again. And that's going to pop the burger melt trophy. You can skip all these cutscenes, that's fine. Now once we're back in the hallway, we're gonna go in the middle door, which is like the left one on the right hand side of the corridor, if that makes sense, just watch the video, it should be clear. Uh, then we're going to scroll through and find the pictures, which are these items, and use them on the easel, which is the white bit of paper there on the, uh, just uh, held up on that kind of, well, easel. <laughs> and uh, we can skip all these cutscenes too. Right, once we're back in control, after skipping all the scenes, we're gonna be on this truck, and we're gonna make another save. Now the rest of the game needs to be finished without dying, which is very easy, and I think it also needs to be finished within a time limit, but the time limit's very forgiving. So just remember to pause your game whilst you're watching the video. If you do, you know, watch the video to check what happens next. Now you wanna open the grill, which is this part on the front of the truck, and then we're gonna put the rabbit that we should still have in our inventory, that's why we needed one left. Put that in the fan, which is gonna give us rabbit ragu. Now we're gonna open up the panel and then quickly grab the guy's uh, cane when he leans out to close it. Now you can take as many goes as you like with that, but once we've got the cane, we're gonna use it on the fan. So just to reiterate, that was a bit quick, sorry. You need to open the panel and as soon as he leans out with his cane, quickly grab it using the hand icon. It's quite difficult to get that right. But once we're on top here, we are going to use the tire iron on the right hand fuel pipe. That's going to give us the now boarding trophy. We can skip through all these cutscenes. that's no problem. And once we're inside, we're gonna click on the ladder and then we're gonna get sort of stopped by some gunfire. And then once it's finished, just click on the ladder again to carry on climbing or, you know, carry on heading towards it. Once we're in the cockpit, we can skip the bit of a scene that starts and then click on the screen. And we want to choose the take off option then post takeoff, then gear, then raise gear. There we go. Now we can skip these scenes and we'll be on the, uh, the truck's like hanging off the edge here. We need to click on the arrow that points down into the cabin of the truck and then click on the screen again. And we're going to click on main menu then defense menu, then machine guns, then control, and then fire. Now this is going to pop the looming seagull trophy, but once you've done that, we're gonna do basically the same again. So go back to the cabin using that arrow and go to the screen. And this time we're gonna click on main menu, then defense menu, then machine guns and control and finally system off this time and that's what's going to progress the game on for us and it's also going to pop two trophies as long as we've done this section without dying we'll get burger well done and can't beat a corley now we're going to click on the red arrow pointing to the right just underneath the truck there we're going to head inside and once we're inside what you want to do is just walk slightly to the left It'll make sense when we get there. You can skip all these cutscenes. Just basically click on the bike 
and that will walk you slightly to the left. Don't walk towards the screen because that will tip the plane. You want to then click on the bike once you're close enough to be able to interact with it. And what you can do is skip this cutscene. Be careful here, don't skip before I say it's okay to. You can skip this one with the big convoy of bikes. You can skip this one where they're sat in the car, but do not skip this one. Where you see our character driving towards the sunset, this is the credits. Now what's going to happen is if you watch all of the credits, then you are going to get the Thank No Cat trophy, which is also going to pop the, uh, the Platinum. Now I'm going to skip most of the credits here, obviously I'm not going to force you to sit and watch through them, but just to show you that the Platinum does pop, we're just skipping to the end of them here. They do go on for quite a while, about 10 minutes, I think. But when the LucasArts logo appears on screen and sort of makes its way up to the middle, you should get the final trophy there. There we go. And where is it? <laughs> it is just there. There we go. Thank no cats and the platinum will unlock shortly after. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you as well again to The Mind is a City for another great text guide. Don't forget to check out the other content on my channel. Thank you guys. I really appreciate all the support and I'll catch you all very soon. Cheers.